Hi, it's Carly with Launch Code. So we just wrapped up um, some setup steps to connect a MySQL database with our Code Events application. In this video, we're uh, once again sort of mostly taking care of some setup steps to be able to work um, with the entity framework itself. So we added um, we added the entity framework as a dependency um, as as one of the setup steps in the last video. Now that we have those tools available, we can add some items to our coding events. Um, so really the setup steps here are to take care of creating what's called a persistent data store. So I just opened up this event data class that we made a while back. This was, um, this was created to as an intermediate step, I guess, before we were able to create the persistent data store. So you can think of event data as um, as a data store that exists only in memory. It exists and holds data only for as long as your application is running. And then if you close it and start it back up again, you don't have that data um, that you created and edited previously. So to create a persistent data store, we're going to take advantage of something called DB context. So I'm going to create a new class within data. And I'm going to call it event db context. And what this is, is um, an extension of a class that's made available to us called db context. So I'm going to make sure to extend that class and Visual Studio doesn't know about it yet, or my IntelliSense doesn't. But if I hover at just the right spot, I can get this tooltip to, um, to use the right uh, namespace to take advantage of this entity um, class. So to extend this DB context class that's made available to us via uh, entity framework, we have like a couple of requirements that need to um, be included. So one of them is a property call that's a type db set. So I'm going to do prop again. Oops. And db set is just going to be a collection of our event objects because this data store is, is meant to collect these events. I might have to import that one too. Yeah, so I have to import the, the model's namespace in order or use the model's namespace in order to have access to events here and we're just going to call this events so you can think of this as like the replacement of that events collection that we've edited in a number of places and apart from that property remove that space apart from that property we also want to set up um, this constructor to uh, to extend the base class constructor so if you remember from inheritance um, constructors aren't necessarily inherited but we will want to um, extend this using another object called DB context options. And we're not really going to go into too much detail about um, what these options are. They're just configuration options to be able to create this store. But like I said, we want to extend um, the original DB context objects. Um, constructor. So we have that extension using this base option. Save that. You can think of um, what we're doing here as some some necessary configuration steps, but it's okay if, if the details of that are a little bit vague at this point. So this is the essence of this persistent data store. Um, not a lot of code here, and what is here might not necessarily register as um, I guess completely digestible at this point. There's, it's okay if, if what this looks like looks a little bit vague right now. We're relying on a lot of um, code that's coming to us via the entity framework and that's fine for the time being. Um, but this does allow us to create that store itself. With, uh, with the store created though, we do have to let ASP know that, um, that this is something that, that exists. So we have to go into this file that you might have opened before um, called startup.cs. 
and uh, change a little bit of configuration. We've got this configure services method here within startup.cs and within this we want to add a couple of lines to register the the data store that we just created to register it as to register it as a service within our application. Um, really what that means is we just need the rest of the application to be made aware that there is this store that we that exists. Um, and to do so is also um, is also some code that I don't have memorized, so I'm going to peel it away from our textbook. So I'm going to add this guy right here, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. If I can copy it, there we go. And I'm going to add this here, and I think... need to import some things. Okay. So what we've just added, um, like I said, is another uh, is an item to to register a service within our application. So to make make the framework aware that we have this data store. So we're saying add DB context of the type that we just created. And um, then we need to also say that in order to, to use the DB context that we're going to be using a SQL database. And that's where um, we are registering or that's where we're making that connection with the database connection that we added in our last setup video. Um, so just like the DB context class itself, if um, um, if the, the syntax of this, these lines is a little bit vague or, or not all of the pieces, um, if I'm not explaining everything, that's okay. <laughs> um, this and the DB context object you can think of as, as another sort of setup step that um, is a little bit beyond, the full explanation is a bit beyond the, the scope of this class, but will give you the tools that you need to um, create these relational objects. So speaking of those relational, relational objects, we have one other set of step to get ready to start, um, to start using the entity framework, and that is to slightly modify what our event class looks like. So we're going to go into our models folder. So, and we want to... Um, we want to return to this ID generation. So we spent some time explaining um, how or why we why we've created this empty constructor or no arg constructor that that generates an ID and then increments to the next ID. We um, since we will be creating objects using the entity framework now, we no longer need this incrementation. Um, we we don't need to handle the incrementing of um, IDs ourselves and that's because when the um, wh when the mapper um, the, and that's because the mapper is our friend really it takes care of some of that work for us so the mapper in creating these database objects is um, need takes this ID property um, just by its name and uh, and uses that as the primary key for each event item within a table um, but in order to take advantage of that um, that helper aspect, I guess, of the entity framework, we need to kind of modify what we do. So we have to have a setter on our ID prop, but we can get rid of our next ID and we can just get rid of, oops, we can just get, um, we can just ditch that incrementation within event. And uh, since that's not doing anything anymore, we can also ditch the constructor chaining here. Um, so to reiterate, entity framework itself um, creates and then increments IDs uh, or the ID property on an event or any model object as, um, and uses that as the primary key for, um, for an item in its database. But to, to to use that feature of entity framework, we need our ID property to, to be called ID itself. It can't be called anything else. Um, and it also needs a getter and a setter. Um, and because of that, we can 
remove our, our older version of incrementing those unique IDs. So that's it for setup. Um, we are not quite in a place where we can practice creating these relational objects and seeing them in our database. We need to, um, we need to take care of migrations next.